global sea levels are rising, but modeling and predicting them can be challenging with more and more extreme weather events. Can we use machine learning to track and predict sea level changes? In this project, we will use previously collected data and machine learning to see if we can predict future relative sea level changes. First, on the project page, which will be linked in the description below, you want to scroll all the way down here under the setting up the Google Colab environment and download the sea level prediction.ipynb file. Then on your my drive, you want to create a folder called sea level prediction and upload your Python notebook. To open the notebook, you want to double click on the file here. If you've never used Google Colab before, Google Colab is a platform where you can write, run, and share code. To run a code block, you can click on this play button next to each cell, or you can click on the code block and hold control enter on your keyboard or command enter if you're on a MacBook. You can tell a code block has been run by the text under the code block here or by the green check mark here. You can add a code block by clicking on this plus code button here. And to delete a code block, you can click the trash icon next to each cell over here. Now let's get started on the project. First, you want to navigate to the tide and currents page showing the US linear relative sea level trends. This page will be linked on the project page. And then you want to navigate to a city you're interested in. And in my case, I'm interested in San Francisco. And check the dates for which data is available. Ideally, you have 75 to 100 years of data. And your data has the most recent year possible. To access the data, click on the station ID to the left of each city. You'll be brought to this page that shows the relative sea level trend over time in the city that you chose. And to download the data for the city you chose, all you have to do is click on this export to CSV button. Before you upload your CSV file to your Google Drive, you'll need to make some changes to your CSV file. First being you want to delete the rows 1 to 5 to get rid of the introduction. To do that, you want to select the first row, hold shift on your keyboard, select the fifth row, right click, and then delete. Then you want to go through your column names to make sure there's no extra spaces. To do that, you can click on the column name and you'll see that it will be available here. Go back and then backspace. And I see that that one does not have any extra space. But if I check the next one, go back, and we see there was a space for the month column. And just do this for the rest of the columns. Then back to your My Drive, upload the CSV file that you just downloaded to your sea level prediction folder. And then rename this file to sea level prediction. CSV. Now back to your Colab notebook and run all of the code blocks under the importing library section. And to do that, you can either run them one at a time or collapse the cell block and then run this play button over here. When you get this pop-up, make sure to connect to the Google Drive so that within your code, you have access to the CSV file you uploaded earlier. Then you can finally load your data into a pandas data frame by running this code block here. You see the first five rows of your CSV file here. This means we can now work with our data in the code. Before training our machine learning model on the data, we'll first pre-process the data. Since we are going to be using the profit model, and the profit model requires our data to be in a very specific format, this first code block will reformat our data in a way that the profit model can understand. All you need to do to do that is to run this code block. And we can see that there's a new column called DS, which stands for a date stamp. We can see that it is the year and the month column combined in this specific date stamp format. We'll also run this next code block, which drops the month and year column now that the DS column is redundant with it, and set the DS column as the index of this data frame. We can see that it is the index because this column name is set lower than the other column names. Now we can visualize our data to see trends that were already happening with sea levels. And if you run this first code block, you'll see a graph of the monthly sea levels over the years. And at least in the case of San Francisco, there appears to be a slight upward trend. We'll define another helper function that'll help us visualize the data, 
by running this next code block here. In the next code block, we can define the specific time frame in which we want to see the data. By default, we have set the start year to 1900 and the end year to 1910. And if we run this code block, you'll see a closer view of the monthly mean sea levels as well as the yearly rolling mean trend. We can see in this particular time frame, the trend appears to be quite flat, but this is a relatively short time frame. So let's test some other values. Instead of 1900 to 1910, let's try a 50 year time frame, so 1900 to 1950. With a wider time frame, we can more easily see that there is a slight upward trend. Now let's go a little bit backwards in time and try 1875 and maybe 1900, so a 25 year time frame this time. And here we can see the trend ever so slightly tips downward. Test out different time frames to see if you can find an interesting trend. Before we continue, I'd like to take a minute to tell you more about Science Buddies. We're a nonprofit with free instructions for over a thousand projects on our website, not only in computer science, but in many other areas as well. You can search for a specific project on our website, or you can take a quiz about your interests and we'll help you find a project. We love hearing from our users, so we'd appreciate if you could let us know why you're watching this video and what you've learned. Are you a student, parent, or educator? Are you doing this for a project for school, a club, or just for fun? Leave us a comment and let us know. Now back to the code. Next, we'll be splitting our data into train and test. This first code block will be separating our X and Y. If we run this code block, and if we create another code block and type in our X and run it, we'll see that it will contain everything but the monthly MSL. And that is because the monthly sea level is what we want to predict. And if we type in Y instead and run it, we'll see that our Y will only contain the monthly MSL. This next code block will decide our start date, our split date, and our end date. Our start date will be the first date to include in the training set. Our split date will be the cutoff date that separates training and testing. End date will be the last date to include in the testing set. And if we run this code block, and we can see that on this side will be our training set, and this side will be our test set. And remember that you can split the data however you want. So you can try training 80 years of data to predict 20 years of data, or maybe even 20 years of data to test on 80 years of data. There will be more suggestions on the project page. But for now, we'll move on to training the model. To train the model, all you have to do is run this code block. We can see the model changed really quickly in a total of 1.34 seconds, and that is just one of the best features of the profit model. To make predictions on our test data, all we have to do is run this second code block. Below, you'll see a fancy table with all these features for the forecast. We'll use some of these for when we're evaluating the model, but otherwise we'll skip this and you can go into it if you want to do some ad more advanced analysis. We can now move on to evaluating our model. To plot our first graph, all you need to do is run this code block. We can see our profit forecast by the blue line here. The lighter blue area is showing the uncertainty range of the prediction, meaning the profit model believes that the predictions will actually be around here, but there's a chance they should, could show up up here or down here. And it kind of looks like our model did relatively well at predicting the trend, and the lighter blue region does capture these stragglers for the most part. Now let's plot our second graph. Here we can see the forecast and the comparison with the rolling mean as well. This is the yearly rolling mean. Here up close, we can see there's sort of a up and down nature to our mean at least, but it looks like our model is doing smaller bumps and a relatively linear trend. There are some parameters we can change in our profit model to see if we can try to get it to match more of this trend, but for now, we'll move on. We can calculate our mean absolute error by running this code block here. We can see that our MAE is about 0.05, and that means that on average, our predictions are off by 0.05 meters. Next, we'll calculate our SMA. PE. And here we can see that my SMA PE is about 111.95 or 112. And this means that our predictions are about 112% off on either side. And if we look back on this graph, we can see it's about 112% off between the actual prediction, which is the red, and the forecast, which is the blue. 
Now we'll run our final code block. And here we can see the profit model try to forecast until the year 2100. And if you want, you can actually go back to the NOAA page where you got your data. Click on regional scenarios right over here. And then you can compare your prediction to the scientist's projections. Here we can see that there are actually multiple scientist projections. Some of them are really low, like this black line over here. Some of them are much higher, like this yellow and orange line. And the reason there are so many projections is because there are so many variables that affect the sea levels. For example, this lower projection might be the scenario in which put all of our efforts into conservation and reducing emissions. And this higher projection might be the scenario in which we continue to increase our emissions. I'm no expert, but you can read more about how the scientists have created their projections by checking out the 2022 sea level rise technical report. From here, there are other experiments you can do. The first being go back to code block 4b under the splitting data into train and test, changing the dates that you are training and testing on. And with that, we've reached the end of this coding tutorial. Remember that you can find written instructions as well as this code notebook linked in the description below. And for a thousand other projects for all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.